Hello, Mr. Wagner. Welcome back to Europe. Thank How you. are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having us again in Austria. We're happy to be here. Okay, so it's uh, I think it's the second headlining tour in Europe for you. Yes. So how does it feel to be back in Europe headlining again in bigger venues? Um, it, it feels good. I mean, we're always trying to grow in Europe, so uh, every time we come back it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit better. And uh, that's a good thing. So you know, we're definitely happy to be back. And like you said, we're you know some of the venues are a little better, a little bigger. Um, I think for the most part, there's you know the turnouts have been pretty good. So um, yeah, we're really really happy to be back, man. Okay, so you're touring with Periphery and the Safety Fire. How come that you actually always take some kind of band which is influenced like Mashuga? Uh, I think it's more, that's more coincidence, I, I think it's just, um, like for, for this tour, for example, you know, we, we kind of know the periphery guys, and um, we wanted to do a tour with them, and, uh, and it just worked out well, scheduling-wise, for us to come over here together, so, you know, it's not, it's not so much that we're trying to take uh, bands that are influenced by the sugar, <laughs> but, um, in fact, we actually toured over here with Mashuga at one point. But um, yeah, we just we're friends with the guys and have known them for a while, and thought it'd be cool to do a European tour together. Okay, so uh, uh, it's been a few few weeks since for the release of the latest album, yeah. Parallax Part Two. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Uh, so how does it feel to have a full length after three years, actually? It, it feels really good. I mean, um, we did an EP in between, but you know, EP is a little different. You know, it was it was uh, just kind of a small release, you know, and and this this release seems a lot uh, a lot bigger. There's a lot more push from the record label, and um, it seems to have a lot more hype on it. So we're really excited, you know, and the, and the fans seem to be really into the new songs and. And stuff that we're playing, so yeah, it feels really good. And, and, and like you said, it has been a while since we released the full length, so we're very happy. Okay, so here we have another album of really long songs. Some of some of, some are a little bit shorter, but uh, a couple, yeah. how do you guys choose uh, choose songs for set list? It's it's very hard. Um, it's a little easier when we're headlining because we have a little bit longer. So if we have like you know, an hour or more to play, then it's then we can play like six, six or seven songs. You know, um, where it gets really difficult is if we're if we are a support band and we only get like thirty minutes, then we you know we can only play really two or three songs. So it's hard to like figure out which ones we're gonna play. But we usually just try to think about what type of crowd is gonna be there and what sort of songs they might into you know if it's more of a metal crowd then we might play some of the heavier stuff if it's more of a rock crowd you know maybe we'll play some of the some of the stuff that has the more you know more dynamics more uh, you know more soft parts or singing parts or something like that so mm -hmm. so uh, okay parallax 2 is actually a continuation of the concept which was established with previous EP so uh, were there any specific inspiration for these concept albums, like other concept albums, books, movies, or something else? Not really. I mean, I think it was, for, uh, for me, I thought it would be like, it was like the next logical step for us, because we had already, we had already done like, um, you know, with Colors, for example, that was musically, musically it was conceptual. You know, we, it was written as basically one big piece of music. Um, so I just thought it was the next step for us was to do something that was uh, lyrically conceptual and had kind of a story to it, and and we all kind of we're all kind of interested in in sci-fi and like science fiction and stuff, and and um, so we just thought it'd be kind of cool something to do, and and that like that sort of sci-fi thing I think fits fits the type of music that we write, and our music's pretty pretty weird and. So, um, kind of having space-themed lyrics and 
things, you know, time travel and the the uh, the idea that another you exists somewhere in the universe, um, that kind of thing, like interest interests us a little bit. So I thought it would be cool to to do an album like that. It pretty much reminds me of one movie called Another Earth. Yeah, yeah, I saw a trailer for that movie and I was like, they ripped off my idea. <laughs> but they probably did. Uh, but the whole thing, the difference between Colors concept and uh, Parallax 2 is uh, for, for Colors each song stands for one color. But this, the whole Parallax 2 is storytelling album. Yeah, this is more of a, this is definitely more of a story uh, from start to finish. Uh, Colors was really, even though the music was was written in a very seamless fashion, the lyrics really, you know, were, you know, one song was one I idea lyrically, and then the next song was another idea completely. So, um, yeah, this is very much different. This is this is a story from start to finish. So, definitely. Uh, so, uh, your music is quite unusual for today trends. And especially for metal scene, yeah. uh, how do you cope with all these disagreements with uh, traditional metal heads? <laughs> you are not exactly like a metal, totally metal band, but you like you, you're performing with other other genres like blues, jazz, and and so on. Yeah, I mean, we never pay attention to that stuff. We just write write the music that we want to write. And it always seems to have an, an undercurrent of metal. I think we're, we are a metal band, you know, we're a heavy band. Um, we don't necessarily fit the mold of a traditional metal band or a traditional hardcore band. Um, but, you know, that to me that's a good thing. I like it when bands are pushing the envelope a little bit and kind of pushing the genre forward. You know, you don't want to have the same, you know, the same type of music. Just keep, keep going and going and going, you know. That's not to say that I don't, I mean, I like thrash metal, I like old school metal, but for, for us, for our band, we're, our goal is to really kind of push the limits of what is accepted as a, as a heavy band. And uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job of that. So, you know, there's always going to be the, the, the metal purists out there that don't really like what we do or think that we're, I don't even know, you know, they might just think we're, we're not metal. We, we are influenced by you know other types of music, but um, that's fine with us. You know, we, we still have a lot of fans out there that appreciate what we do and, and um, support what we do. So as long as as long as those people are out there, we'll keep doing it. I do you think you inspired like some bands to to don't play just metal to look up other other musical genres? Definitely, I think so, you know, um, I think that, you know, it's a big thing, you know, the majority of our fans really are music, musicians themselves, you know, guitar players, drummers, or whatever, so, um, you know, hopefully maybe they'll listen to a band like us and, and kind of see, see some of our influences and, and go back and visit those, those bands that have influenced us, and, you know, go back to the 70s and listen to those bands, you know, Pink Floyd, and Queen, and stuff like that, and, listen to that kind of stuff and, and maybe they'll get in, inspired by that stuff as well so um, yeah you know and you're seeing you're seeing more and more bands I think now as you said that are more you know that are taking metal and, and sort of adding some other ingredients to it to spice it up so that's kind of what we've been doing for a while and um, hopefully there'll be more bands that, that do the same thing uh. How do you actually write a song? Do you jam on, on ideas or do you write actually the whole gr ground of this song? I mean, you yeah, we, we're not really, we don't really jam. Everything's usually pretty ri like written beforehand, you know, and we just bring ideas together and, and then, you know, we'll feed off of one another, but um, it's all pretty methodical the way we put a song together and and, you know, ideas are already kind of hashed out in our brains before we ever really show, you know, before we ever really try to play them, you know. So, um, 
you know, there's there's some some ideas happen spontaneously. Some really good ideas happen that way. But for the most part, um, you know, we we all write individually and just bring ideas to, together, and then just try to start constructing the song very methodically, and uh, and then and then we we try to play it, you know. And if okay. it sounds good, then then that's great. And sometimes it sounds a little rough, and we'll make some changes and. So, yeah, that's kind of how we write it. Okay, uh, so I think you're the only member here without a side project. Yeah. So, aren't you gonna make one? No, probably not, I'm too lazy. Too lazy? <laughs> too lazy, yeah. No, I don't know, I've, I've entertained the idea, but um, there's been some guys that I wanted to, that you know, I'd actually planned on doing side projects with, but just hasn't, this, you know, the other people are pretty busy as well with their own bands, so um, we just haven't haven't found the time to do it yet. But I'm sure eventually I'll, I'll get something together. Haven't you ever been thinking? I want to do a side project. I want to do. I want to play a country country band, a country band, or I want to play blues rock or uh, like ZZ Top. <laughs> that would be fun. Maybe I'll maybe I will try that. That sounds pretty cool, actually. <laughs> maybe I'll try that. Uh, so, uh, do you feel uh, exhausted after uh, you've been doing a lot this year? Record a new album, uh, you did a huge American tour, Summer Slaughter, and now you're, after one year, you're already back in Europe. Do you feel like exhausted after the whole busy schedule? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all pretty, pretty tired right now. I think we're all excited to go home. But at the same time, I think we're all aware that, you know, this is kind of what we signed up to do. So we have to, we have to do it. And, you know, every night when we get up on stage, we play as best we can and, and try to entertain the crowd. And, um, and then, you know, deal with, deal with our homesickness later. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty tired, for sure. But, you know, we still got a long way to go. We still have to finish this tour and then go to Japan and Australia and New Zealand. And then, and then we get to go home for the holidays <laughs> and stuff. So if we start thinking about it too much, you know, it, it gets really depressing. So you just take it a day at a time and try to make the most of it. It's a really good opportunity to be able to travel and play music. So um, you, know, you try not to take that for granted and just try to try to have fun and try to enjoy the other cultures and the other types of people that we get to meet. So, um, yeah, we miss home. But. Okay, so uh, uh, do, you, uh, uh, do you find uh, metal music occasionally boring because the whole bunch of new releases, like there's, there's almost every day a new metal release? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of bands. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's hard to keep up with it, to be honest. Um, I don't know that I find it boring. I'm, I'm just not... I don't really listen to a whole lot of metal anymore, to be honest with you. I mean, there's some bands that I hear now and, now and again that I really like. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really just enjoy listening to softer music, to be honest. You know, uh, and so I don't really keep track so much of the metal the metal releases, but you're right, there are a lot of them, and there's just a lot of bands, there's a lot of metal bands nowadays, so. Uh, so, uh, considering that you like softer music, when can we expect uh, Between the Burn and Me performing an unplugged show? <laughs> That'd be awesome, actually. I don't know, it'd be hard to, some of our songs, I don't think I, I could actually play them on an acoustic guitar, it'd be too hard, but, I, I, never say never, maybe one day we'll do that. Or actually, you can make an album like Opens the Nation. Yeah, right, yeah, we could. We might do that. But then people would say we were ripping off Opens. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, that's all from me. So, do you have any messages for the fans, for the viewers of this interview? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for, for supporting our band. We love, uh, we love the opportunity to come in here and play in for Europeans. And um, we hope to come back here many, many more times. And hopefully the shows will get bigger and better and we'll make more and more and more money. <laughs> okay.
Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Yeah, wow.